Welcome to Crime News with Mark Solomon. Today we're going to be talking about the state's filings just happened yesterday. They filed opposition to the defense's motion for a new trial with a long brief. We're going to talk about that. But before we get to that, don't forget to click like and subscribe. If you're enjoying these videos, click the bell to be notified of future videos so when I upload new ones, you will know about it. So let's go ahead and look at the filings in that case. If you look, you can see on the state page that they've put in the court system, they have listed all of the um, filings in the case. And we're going back a little bit, but um, when we look at the... Um, June 2nd, that was the defense's filings to ask for what we call in Colorado a post-conviction motion. Basically, right after the trial, but before sentencing, the defense has to ask for a whole lot of things so that the trial court can address fairness of trial, what the judge did wrong, and allow the judge to address that, make a record, and, and obviously that's going to be appealable by either side. But June 2nd is when the sentencing memorandum and the post-verdict memorandum, plus the state's memorandum law and sentencing, all that was filed. Now yesterday, June 16, here you can see the um, state filed a memorandum in opposition to the defense's post-verdict post motions. Let's look at that because that's going to tell a lot about what the um, what the defense did and what the state is saying in response to that. So here you can see this was filed just yesterday, June 16, and it is the state's memo in opposition to the post-verdict motions. I'm going to skip a little of the intro. I've highlighted some so we can get right to the meat of the arguments. The defendant's motion for a new trial should be denied. Well, it, it's not based on pretrial publicity, says the prosecutor. And I've highlighted some passages here. He did receive a fair trial by an impartial jury and nothing requires the court to take the extraordinary step of overturning the jury's lawful verdict. Um, let's unpack that for a minute. When the state says that there's an uh, extraordinary step of overturning the jury, think about that for a second. Um, we have a system of justice where a jury hears the case and makes the factual decision, did he do it or not? And in this case, we had a jury and they made a decision that he did it. That's the guilty verdict. And when the court says, well, we don't think this is working for some reason or other, and they go back and either award a new trial or overturn the verdict altogether, that's what we in the justice system call an extraordinary step because the whole system is designed to give the jury the power so that the courts aren't making the decisions of whether or not somebody committed a crime it's a jury what these entire sets of motions and responses and replies to motions are all about are trying to figure out whether or not that was a fair verdict um, whether you had a, an opinion on that or another let me know in the comments i'd love to hear it we'll talk about it in an upcoming episode but in this case the state is saying that um, the defendant requests the extraordinary remedy of a new trial after a verdict and he bears a heavy burden he must prove that both the court abused his discretion and that the court's decisions actually prejudiced his case, which is really difficult to prove. Um, he, you know, the prosecutor goes on and talks about how or wrote about how the court properly exercised its discretion to decide where when um, it held its trial. Um, the cases of international prominence, there's um, there's no reason to believe that any part of the state was um, less impacted by any of the pretrial publicity. And he goes on to say that very importantly, this court's decisions um, did not prejudice the defendant in any way. He received a trial by 12 impartial jurors, and I know there's some consternation about that, all of whom testified that they could try this case fairly. There was no accident. The court oversaw extensive voir dire process, and we all saw the extensive voir dire process. So that's, you know, obviously not in fact. The real question is, were they impartial? And we're going to get to that later down in the um, in this response. Now, I've highlighted in red, it came out a little bit hard to read, so I'm just going to read it to you. It says, the defendant has offered no concrete evidence to the contrary. Instead, he asked the court to presume that the jurors were prejudiced simply because this was a high-profile matter. Um, you should read this because um, he talks quite a bit about how the defendant was not denied the judicial serenity and calm to which he was um, entitled. He talks about how this was not a kangaroo court. There were no you know, outrageous shenanigans going on in the courtroom and that this was essentially a fair trial. And that's the end of part one of a three-part series that we're doing on this deep dive into the post-conviction motions. So please stick around for part two. 
But until then, if you have any comments, questions, issues, thoughts, concerns, please put them in the comments below. Tag me or uh, tag me on Twitter or email me. We'd love to hear your comments. Thanks for watching.